So I started with a 10 inch one and uh, excuse the rust on this. This is actually um, because they're mild steel, they're not, they're not stainless steel or anything. Uh, it does oxidize, so this has some surface patina. I just have to polish that up. Started with my 10 inch homemade metal one. Went to an 8 inch one that was not only smaller, but a lot lighter and thinner. Uh, and that, again, like I said, it, it actually was uh, serviceable. It, it, it was usable uh, as a buckler, even though it's very thin and very light and very small. Um, and then comes to the store-bought one, which is 9 inches. So I went 10 inch, 8 inch, 9 inch. And 9 inch, you know, is a nice, comfortable balance, especially, to be fair, if you're actually going to be using it against other people. Um, you know, it does give you a little more, a little more around your hand and around your sword hand than the, the 8 inch one does. Um, but the fact that the 8 inch one actually would be usable is, is telling because the weight difference between these is tremendous. Not only is this uh, an inch smaller, but it's so much thinner and lighter. Now this is probably, for long-term durability, this is probably too thin and too light, but it's just worth noting that it actually was usable. So, um, you know, if somebody was interested in just having something light to carry around as a buckler, uh, remember, sword and buckler, just like a single sword, uh, this was a sidearm setup. This was something that somebody carried around with them. They might use it, they might not. Um, think about policemen today with guns or, or, or private citizens who carry guns with, you know, gun permits for self-protection. Almost never do they have to take them out. Most of the time, they just sit there. Um, so, you know, you want something that's uh, small enough and easy enough to carry. Um, and in that sense, you know, in, in the medieval time period, when these were used, a smaller one, whether you're talking eight inches or nine inches, um, would have been probably preferable than something that's really big and cumbersome. You know, a 14 or 15 inch buckler, now you're getting, it's essentially like a small shield and, and you're getting to the point where it really is going to stick out more and be a little too much of a pain in the bum. Um, so for, for carry purposes back then, a nice compromise between usability and being able to carry it around and not have it be too heavy or cumbersome. Uh, I could see why they would want them smaller, just like, you know, if somebody's going to be carrying a, a, a pistol all day as, as either for personal protection or as part of their job, if they're a policeman or, or security guard or whatever. You know, they're, they're probably not going to carry the biggest, you know, largest, heaviest pistol they can get their hands on. They're probably going to want something that's, you know, big enough to do the job, but, you know, still uh, light enough to carry and, and fits with all their other gear and, and, and whatever. Um, I mean, one of the things is you see pistols that are designed, for example, for civilian carry, a lot of times they're smaller than full-size service pistols. And there's a reason for that. Smaller and lighter, usually. Um, same thing with, with uh, you know, the historical counterparts. And um, there is also, again, the other aspect that if you're trying to learn the techniques, we don't carry these around nowadays. You go to the fencing club and you use it or you practice at home. Nobody's walking around in the street with sword and buckler. Um, it would be interesting to see what would happen if you did, but um, you'd probably get in some kind of trouble. Uh, so here's the deal. Um, people might be practicing at the fancy club or at their house or at a friend's house, but you're not walking around in public with these. These aren't everyday carry items the way they would have been in the medieval period. So the size doesn't matter for that, but what does it matter for? Well, the interface between the two items while you're using them, again, a larger buckler is going to get in the way, uh, be a little more cumbersome. Yes, it, it would provide more protection, but um, only if you could use it effectively. And I keep coming back to you as a HEMA noob, as somebody who's new to this, it's actually easier to learn the techniques if you do have a smaller buckler than something that's more big and cumbersome. So, you know, for practicing the techniques at home, something like this really lightweight, small 8-inch one is fine. Um, something like this 9-inch one is fine. The 10 inch one isn't even all that bad. Would I want to go much bigger than 10 inches? Not really. Why? Because then it does become too cumbersome. And the thing is, when you're talking about bucklers, like I said, uh, size does matter. You know, once you get to a certain size, 
it's not really a buckler anymore. It's a shield in terms of the fact that how you use a buckler is different than how you use a shield, generally speaking. Uh, it's more mobile. It, it interacts with the sword hand more fluidly. And again, to be able to have the items apart and then bring them together at the moment of impact. To do that, you have to have a buckler that's small enough to be maneuverable and to interface with the sword and the sword hand. So my first foam and steel attempt at 10, at 10 inches was is probably about as big as I'd really want to go. Um, you know, nine inches, that's pretty good. I think the eight inch one is a little small, but for practicing solo, not bad. Would I really want to trust this in a fight? Not really. I mean, I've beat on it pretty hard with my own sword and uh, it hasn't broken, but you know, it is very thin in addition to being smaller in diameter. So, you know, that's a separate thing, but yeah, nine or 10 inches, I would say is probably a great size buckler uh, for a beginner. Now, as you get better, could you maybe be better at using the techniques and having the two, the two interact so that you can actually take advantage of the maybe better protection offered by a slightly larger buckler by a 12 inch or a 14 inch one? Probably, you know, as you get better at it. But if you're just trying to learn the techniques, uh, I find that I, I think a smaller one actually would be better because again, the, the whole idea is that the weapons are held apart. They come together at the moment of impact. And what that really, um, you know, it, it's really essential that you don't have something that's going to essentially get, get in its own way. So, um, you know, as a noob, just an observation I made, I honestly don't know what the, you know, the, the proper size buckler is. And I'm not sure anybody does, because frankly, historically, there were a variety of different kinds, as well as different shapes, build materials, etc. But I think my observations, if you're trying to learn how to do this and use two items, and keep in mind, if you're coming from a background like longsword, which, you, you know, it's a single use item using one item for both attack and defense, whereas here you have two items and you're using them simultaneously. It's a very different thing. So if you're trying to learn how to do that, um, you know, and do that effectively, it, it seems to me that what you want is a buckler that's actually not going to get it its own way or yours. And that to me is a buckler that's nine or maybe 10 inches big. I wouldn't go any bigger than that. So just my take on uh, buckler size as a noob. And again, uh, keep in mind, I'm no expert at this, but my, my, I keep coming back to the fact that the weapons are held apart. They come together at the moment of impact. If you have a problem when you're bringing them together, if you're, the rim of the buckler sticks out too much, knocks your sword point offline, bounces off the sword and opens up a gap, whatever, anything that goes wrong at that moment is what's going to get, you know, get you thrust in the arm with a sword and disarmed and, and lose the fight or make it, you know, ineffective by knocking your own blade offline. So you can't attack the other person, etc. But the point is if something goes wrong up here, it's almost no big deal. You don't want it to go wrong here when they're interfacing because they interface at the moment of attack and defense. But that's when something will go wrong. If the buckler is too big or cumbersome or whatever, or you haven't learned how to do the move because you're dealing with an overly large buckler. So my take on it is smaller bucklers, easier to learn how to use. Um, I might be wrong, but that's just my take on it. Own rider out.